spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing. And even favor upon favor. And God washed in the blood of Jesus. God's got some good things for you and you know it. Amen. Amen. Well, the last few weeks we've been talking about, I think this is week number five, we've been talking about the new birth and talking about the importance of the new birth. And uh, we're going to continue in that light today. I believe that God has some things that he wants to get across to us. As we said before when we were talking, that we, it's important that we understand. Turn to 1 Thessalonians, if you will, once again. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. It's like in this second service, God takes me in a totally different direction. But it's okay. 2 Thessalonians uh, 5. Well, let's try 1 Thessalonians. Some of y'all knew that, didn't you? That's so smart. Praise the Lord. Look at verse 23. Second, first, I don't want to keep saying second. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. This is the Apostle Paul writing to the church. He said, In the very God of peace, sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole what? Come on, everybody. Your whole what? Spirit. And what? Soul. And what? Wow. Be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it lets us know that we are a triune being. Tri means three. That means we have a spirit, soul, and a body. And it's important that we see from the scripture that the scripture makes the priority or number one, your spirit. Then your soul. And then your body. Your spirit is the part of you, according to Genesis 1.26, that was created in the image and the likeness of God. Jesus met the woman at the well in St. John 4.24. He said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible says in Proverbs 20.27, 20, it says, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. That simply means that God will guide you, God will direct you, God will enlighten us through our spirit. Our spirit is the part of us that is eternal. And it's important for you and I to understand this so that when a, a loved one dies, they don't just go down into the ground. Their spirit goes back to their maker, God the Father. Can you say amen to that? Amen. And if you are born again, your spirit has the Zoe life of God on the inside of you. Can you say amen? amen. Let me get Jack, I mean, um, uh, Jesse and Damon and, and Jason. Why don't you just come up on the platform today? elevate you a little bit one of the things I've been purposefully doing is illustrating so that you can see because I believe it's very important that you and I understand the new birth a lot of times when a person gets born again we think that getting saved converted get your sins white getting your sins washed in the blood conversion all of those things are talking about the new birth now, Jesus had a conversation with a very religious man in St. John chapter 3, Nicodemus, and Nicodemus came to him by night. Do you know, as I did some research on Nicodemus, it said that he was one of the three wealthiest men in Jerusalem? And when he came to Jesus, he asked Jesus, he said, Teacher, he said, we know you are sent from God because no man can do the miracles that you do except God be with him. Jesus cut to the quick and said, you got to be born again. And Nicodemus, being a religious ruler, he said, how can a man who is old go back in his mother's womb again? And Jesus said, you are a ruler in Israel. You don't understand these things? And what Jesus was talking about, he wasn't talking about a physical birth. He was talking about a spiritual birth. And child of God, when you accept Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior, your spirit is recreated by the power of God. Now you have a human spirit. But before you get born again, the devil is the one who is Lord over your human spirit. And whatever he wants you to do, you follow him. The Bible says that he is the God of this world. But the moment that you get born again, the Holy Spirit comes, kicks the devil off of the throne, and now you are in partnership with God. Now understand this partnership with God is the recreation of your spirit. Nothing has happened to your soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect, and your soul receives all of its information through your five physical senses. Your soul receives all of its education, all of its knowledge through the five physical senses. 
But once you are born again as a child of God, you are no longer to rely upon the information you receive only through your five physical senses. Now you've got to receive information through your spirit. And this is why Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18. He said, I pray for a spirit of wisdom and revelation that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. He's talking about your spirit. That your spirit will receive light. The Bible says that the entrance of his word gives light. The more of God's word that you receive, the more light comes into your spirit. When that light comes into your spirit, it gives you understanding of spiritual things. Even though your natural mind doesn't comprehend it, your spirit understands it. But according to Romans 12, 2, it says once we renew our mind, what do we renew our mind with? We renew our mind with the word of God. Every time you read and study the Word of God, your mind is being renewed or transformed. The Word of God says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing, not the removal, but by the renewing of your mind. The Phillips translation says, don't allow the world to squeeze you into its mold. So there's pressure being put on you all the time through the vehicle of your body to try to get you to make decisions. And as people of God, we've got to feed on the Word of God and renew our minds to the Word of God. Can you say amen to that? Amen. The reason why a lot of times a person can be born again, washed in the blood of Jesus, in partnership with the Holy Spirit, but they still smoke, they still cuss, they still lie, they still drink, it's because they haven't renewed their mind, and therefore because their mind is not renewed, they are still being controlled by their body. Child of God, it's your responsibility to do something with your body. God's not going to do anything with your body. If you've got a problem with lust, you've got to do something with your mind. If you've got a problem with stealing, you've got to do something with your mind. All of these problems that believers are having is a result not of their recreated spirit because they're born again. But the problem that they're having is with their soul and with their body. Because as I said to you last time we were together, your body is used to have it. If you do something long enough, your body will go through the routine of doing things. You remember I told you when we were on the 21-day fast, my body wanted to go to Wawa and still get coffee because it was used to a routine. It was used to following a certain pattern. And what I've got to do with the Word of God is break the pattern. And the only thing that can break the pattern is the Word of God. It's no use you and I beating up our body and destroying our body. We've got to discipline our body, and that's the purpose of the fruit of the Spirit. Notice, it's the fruit of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit. These are the fruit of the Holy Spirit. These are the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness. These are the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Once we partner with the Holy Spirit, those fruit should be manifesting in our lives. But if we don't yield to the Holy Spirit, even though He's in us, we won't see kindness. And how many of you know there's a lot of mean Christians out there? Because the fruit of the recreated spirit is not having any influence on their spirit. Are you following me with this? When you and I got born again, our spirits were created with the life of God. Say, I have the life of God on the inside of me. Turn with me, if you will, to Ephesians now. Ephesians chapter 2. What I'm going to do with the help of the Holy Spirit I'm going to show you by illustration what God has deposited on the inside of you at the time of the new birth. Now, I'm going to ask the soul and the body stand down here on the floor. Okay? Now, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, Spirit, you can have a seat right there. Look what it says in Ephesians chapter 2. Okay? Verse 4. It says, But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he has loved us, for even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, for by grace are you saved. Now notice what he did. He did what? Verse 6, he did what? He did what? He did what? If he raised us up, then we're not supposed to live, be living low. No low-level living for you as a child of God if you've been raised up. Now notice, we, he, he has raised us up together, and notice what he did. He made us do what? He made us sit. Sitting is a posture and a position that you have in the spirit. Are you following me? 
It's a posture and a position that you have in the spirit. And it says he made us sit together with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is what of God? Come on, talk to me. It is what? God has put on the inside of you at the time of the new birth, he has made deposits down on the inside of you. He has put gifts and talents and abilities down on the inside of you. The moment that you got born again, a major impartation took place. You are not the same person. Spiritually, you have now the life and the nature of God on the inside of you. Say it, I've got the life and nature of God on the inside of me. Come on, testify again. I've got the life and the nature of God on the inside of me. God made a major deposit on the inside of you at the time of the new birth. We are partakers through the exceeding great and precious promises. We are partakers of what? His divine nature. His divine nature. He is love. He moves by faith. You have the nature of God down on the inside of you. If you have the nature of God down on the inside of you, then you should be stronger. That nature on the inside of you is stronger than in inferiority. Amen. It's stronger than jealousy. Can you say amen to that, church? Amen. You have the divine nature of God on the inside of you. He has gifted you. He has given you talents. He has given you abilities. All of those are on the inside of you. The moment that you got born again, you have the power of God on the inside of you. But you might say, well, pastor, if I have all these things on the inside of me, then why am I having so much trouble with my flesh? Because you got to renew your mind. God's not going to do that for you. God's not going to take those thoughts away from you. What you've got to do as a man and woman of God is you've got to renew your mind. And then you've got to discipline your body with the fruit called temperance. Temperance is self-control. You've got to get control of your appetite. Talk to me, church. I said you've got to get control of your appetite. You've got to get control of your emotions. All the ladies, stand up. I want you to say this as loud as you can. I must. Get control, get control of my emotions. Of my, emotions. My, emotions don't control me, my emotions don't control me. But I control my emotions. But I control my emotions. Now testify to another sister. Say the same thing. Now give God a shout of praise if you believe that. <laughs> Women of God, listen to me. Keep standing. One of the things that will destroy and ruin your life if you are a woman who is controlled by your emotions. Because I'm going to tell you something. You might say, well, you're not a woman. Yeah, but you're not a man either. My point is, is this, stop making excuses for yourself because of your emotions. You're born again. You're born again. When your emotions want to control you, you have a, why is it that you want to have authority over man, but you can't have authority over your emotions? You've got to get authority over your emotion because if not, in the spirit, it makes you very unattractive. Say again. I will control my emotions. I will control my emotions. My emotions will not control me. My emotions will not control me. Now you may be seated. Now I'm going to tell you something. If you are going to walk effectively in faith, that's one area you're going to have to conquer. I'll say it again. I know I'm walking on thin ice, but I have the ability to walk on water. <laughs> if need be. All I'm trying to do is help you. Because I can tell you 
that when the enemy attacks your body or tries to attack your body, the last thing you need to be is emotional about it. You're going to have to live out of your spirit. If you try to live out of your emotions, your emotions will get you killed. Your emotions will get you killed. Because instead of using your faith and living out of your spirit, you will allow your emotions to control everything and every reaction instead of being a stalwart Christian and says, you know what? That hurt my feelings, but I'm not living by them. You have the authority. Listen, you've got to understand that you have the authority as a woman and as a man of God to grab a hold of your emotions and say, I am not going to have a nervous breakdown. I am not going to bust out in tears when I don't hear what I don't like to hear. I'm going to stand strong on God's word and live out of my spirit. Why? Because you have eternal life on the inside of you. You have the life of God on the inside of you. I said you have the life of God on the inside of you. Make no mistake about it. Don't let people label you as emotional because you're a female. Men are just as emotional. <laughs> oh, we kicking over some sacred cows this morning. <laughs> because we, 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 we've taken the lie. Listen to me. We've taken the lie that the world has said to us. And you know what? We say that kid is slow. And we, we, we get upset when we say our kid has been labeled as slow. Or we get upset when we say our kid has been labeled as, as not being able to comprehend things. We get upset when, our children, when, we're, when we are told that our kids cannot comprehend. We get upset about that as parents. Why would you let the world label you as emotional? No, talk to me. Why would you let the world do that? That's not what God said. God said you are an eternal spirit. And we've got to not allow the world to define us. We are allowing the world to define us as if you are the only ones that are emotional. Men can be emotional too, but we've got to get a hold of it. And men, they can't be so stalwart that they can't show emotion. These are labels. These are labels that we are allowing the world to define us. And as a result of it, it's causing us to live by the label instead of live by the word. And people of God, I'm telling you, and the last day, we're going to see stuff that is going to grab a hold of your emotions. And if you run around allowing your emotions to dictate to you whether you feel like praying, whether you feel like reading the Bible, whether you feel like coming to church, if you allow those emotions to control you, the devil will sift you as wheat. <sighs> Hallelujah. You know, I think about what my wife went through with cancer. Stage two. When we got the report of cancer, the doctor left the room. And my wife cried. And I said, it's okay to cry, honey. I said, but we will not fear. See, you've got to be able to move and shift. Are you following me? Please hear me this morning. And please don't get offended and say he doesn't understand. I understand a lot more than you think I understand. You've got to learn how to shift when things hit you in the flesh. And not react out of the flesh, but know how to respond to the spirit. And this is the thing that happens a lot of times. You hear something on the job, and emotionally it affects your flesh. And you start making decisions out of your flesh instead of listening to what your spirit is saying. Because I'm telling you, you can get a bad report. And when you're living out of your spirit, you'll be as steady as a rock. Because you know that the word of God, everything else around you can fail. But the word of God will not pass away. It will not fail you. And it will hold you up with the right hand of God's righteousness. But child of God, hear me this morning. You cannot allow your flesh to control you. Because when you allow your flesh to control you, you are living out of your soul and not your spirit. And this has been a downfall of many strong women of God. They've lived out of their soul. This is what your soul is made up of. Your will, your emotion, your five physical senses. That's what's in your soul that's controlled and influenced by your body. You cannot afford to live there. If not, it's going to destroy you. I'm telling you, as sure as I'm standing here, when you know that you have the Zoe life of God in your spirit and you're living out of the dictates that come on your flesh, you're going to die. Turn to Romans chapter 8. I 
I don't mean to come across strong, but man, this is so serious. This is really serious. I can't tell you how serious this is when it comes down to living out of your spirit. You cannot afford, you cannot afford to allow the emotions that will come out of your body to dictate how you respond. You might be going through a difficult time in your marriage. If you allow your emotions to dictate to you, you're going to divorce someone that God put you in covenant with. Oh, I know you ain't saying nothing right now. You allow your emotions to dictate to you, and you walk by those emotions. You, you, the Spirit of God will be moving in service, and you'll sit there like a bump on a log. Why? I ain't feeling it. Okay? Look what the Word of God says. Chapter 8 of Romans. Oh. Look at verse 5. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Mm. Mm. Look at verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Are you hearing this? They that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For the carnal mind is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is an enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. For they that are, that are in the flesh cannot please God. Put the message up, if you will, starting at verse number 5. Those who think they can do it on their own end up obsessed with measuring their own moral muscles, but never get around to exercising themselves in real life. Those who trust God's, trust God's actions in them, that's your spirit, are you hearing this? Find that God's spirit is in them, living and breathing in them. The next verse. Obsession with self in those matters is a dead end. Attention to God leads us out into, the, look, can you see this? We talked about living the enlarged open life. Do you know that when you live after the flesh, after your emotions, after how you feel, you're living a very narrow life, very restricted life? Obsession with self in these matters is a dead end. Attention to God leads us out into the open, into a spacious and free life. So the opposite is telling us when we live these obsessed life, we're living a life in bondage. The next verse. Focusing on the self is the opposite of focusing on God. Anyone completely absorbed in self ignores God ends up thinking more about self than God. That person ignores, ignores who God is and what he is doing. You cannot focus on your flesh and your emotions and how you feel if you're going to walk by faith. Let the church say, Amen. Now, look at your neighbor in a wonderful smile. And say, get a hold of yourself. <laughs> Tell him again. <laughs> Tell him one more time. Now, just give yourself a hug. Now you got a hold of yourself for real. <laughs> I want you to understand, this is one of the most powerful things that you can get a hold of as a child of God. If you can get a hold of the power of the new birth and what God has put down on the inside of you, you'll no longer be controlled by external things, but you'll be controlled by the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of you. He's put it on the inside of you. You are in partnership with the Holy Spirit. 
you have greatness on the inside of you. Because of you being in right standing with God, he who knew no sin was made to be sin, that you might be the righteousness of God in him. Now you have right fellowship with God. Now you have peace with God. Now you have faith of God. Now you have the mind of Christ. All of this comes to you because of the new birth. Turn with me, if you will, to St. John chapter 1. Glory to God. Praise the name of Jesus. Say this, because of the new birth, the new birth I, have on the I have righteousness on the inside of me. Because of the new birth, the new birth I, have I have fellowship with God. Because of the new birth, the new birth I, have with God. I have peace with God. Because of the new birth, the new birth I, have I have sonship. I have freedom. I have freedom. And, I have and I have authority in Jesus' name. Because of the new birth. And we looked at this scripture the last time we were together, but I believe it bears repeating in St. John chapter 1, verse 16. Glory to God. You guys okay? Good. Spirit, soul, and body, y'all good? All right. Glory to God. St. John 1, 16. And it says, of his fullness have all we what? Come on, lift both hands to heaven and say this. I have the fullness of God on the inside of me. I receive it now by faith. Give him praise for that. It says we have received and grace for grace. If you put the Amplified Bible up on the screen, that would be excellent. Grace for grace. It says out of his fullness, abundance... We have all received, all had a share, and we were all supplied with. Say it. We were all supplied with it. Notice one grace after another. Spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing. And even favor upon favor and gifts heaped upon upon gifts. To hear this message in its entirety, please call 302-324-8050. You can also visit us on the web at www.seedsofgreatness.org. If you're in the Newcastle area, come worship with us at 190 Quickly Boulevard, Newcastle, Delaware, 19720. We have two Sunday services, 8 and 1030 a.m. Make sure you join us next week for another powerful message from Pastor Jerome L. Lewis.